Hello, so if you remember in the last videos, we have created this document. Um, we've kind of customized the layout of the page a little bit, so we've changed the margin size, and we've also changed how these marks appear over here on the right-hand side. So they no longer appear next to the question number, they appear over here on the right-hand side and they're bold and they look a little bit nicer as well. Now, in this video, we're gonna start talking about how we can put parts to questions. Because if I could carry on like this, so I could keep typing questions down here, and they would appear question one, question two, question three, question four, etc. But eventually, I'm gonna to wanna to put parts to questions, like part A, or part one, or part two, okay? So the way which I can do that is simply by entering a parts or a subparts environment. So actually, I'm gonna just quickly change this question here, okay? And I'm gonna put it to be part A and part B. So the way to do this, okay, I'm just gonna put, solve these following examples. So this is gonna be question two, and I'm gonna solve these following examples. So on a new line, I'm gonna begin a parts environment. Okay, and I'm gonna click enter. Now, luckily enough, uh, let Overleaf automatically close this end parts, but if it doesn't automatically, then make sure you put the begin and also the end parts as well. That's really crucial, otherwise it won't compile properly. Okay, now a really subtle thing, you might have noticed it with when I did the questions. When I begin and end an environment in the exam package, so begin and end questions, or in this case, begin and end parts, okay, it's always, plural. So in other words, there's an S after the end. So begin questions, end questions, or begin parts, end parts. But when I actually go and say, I want to create a specific question now, it's singular. Okay, so I had begin and end questions, and then question as a singular. Okay, same kind of idea here. So I'm beginning and ending my parts. So I'm now going to put a part in there. So therefore, it's a singular. So I'm going to type part. And in the same way as I did for my question, I'm gonna type the number of points. So I don't know, let's make this a two point question or a two mark question. Um, I'm gonna put a space afterwards. So I put my number of points after the part and now I'm gonna put a space and let's just suppose we're gonna type, I know, let's just type uh, three times by X minus two equals one, something like that, okay? And you notice that I put it in math mode as well. So begin and end those dollar symbols. That means it's put in math mode and it will compile and look really, really nice. Okay, and don't forget, I'm gonna to need to put drop points. So I come to the end of the question. So I'm gonna put drop points. And this is something you're gonna to have to do now because we've redefined the way in which the points or the marks appear over here on the right-hand side. I'm gonna put drop points after every single question. Okay, and then I'm just gonna put another part. So I'm gonna put part, and let's say this part is gonna be four. And I'm just gonna create a environment, a maths environment. And let's go five, uh, let's go five X minus four. Let's just, uh, let's just because we can, put a fraction in here. So to type a fraction, I'm gonna use the command frac, and then in the numerator, I put the numerator in a curly bracket, so it's to put a one in that curly bracket, and the numerator and the denominator, I put another curly bracket, and let's put that two. So this will appear as one on the numerator, two on the denominator, and don't forget to drop points. Okay, uh, you notice as well that because I've used drop points, uh, well, I've used drop points like three times, well, three times now, um, that LaTeX automatically, or Overleaf automatically starts suggesting um, that I want to use drop points. So you can see here that it starts to appear, okay? Um, it didn't when I first used drop points, okay? But now I've used it two or three times, Overleaf starts to learn, huh, this guy wants to use drop points quite a lot, so therefore I'm going to start suggesting it for him. And if I want to put drop points, if I just get rid of that, so if I want to use their suggestion, I just simply type enter and then it brings it up for me. Okay, so it's a nice little sort of uh, something which makes things a little bit quicker. So if I recompile here, let's see what we get. So you can see that for question two now, I get a part A and a part B. In fact, let's zoom in a little bit more. So I can get a part A and a part B. You notice that I've got a fraction there, okay? By the way, this fraction at the moment is quite small. It's basically trying to fit the fraction to the same height as the rest of the line. So if I want to get over that, if I come back over here on the left-hand side where I've got my code, okay, at the start of my maths mode, I just simply type backslash and then display style. Oops, display style, okay? And just make sure you put a space in between. And what that will do is make that half bigger, okay? So if I now click recompile, you can see that half has now become a lot bigger and a lot more legible. So display style in math mode is a nice little trick to make things look a little bit nicely, a little bit better formatted. Okay, cool. So I've got a part A and a part B question, but what if I want a part one and a part two question? Well, that's totally fine. I can just type a new question 
And let's create a simplify question, okay? And this time I'm gonna create a subparts. So I'm gonna open my brackets and put subparts. And again, it's gonna be plural because I'm opening and closing an environment. And now I'm gonna put in and put a, part, a subpart one and a subpart two. So I type subpart, let's put the number of marks, let's just make it a one mark question. And let's go something like five times by X plus four, I don't know. And don't forget to drop the points. And let's put another subpart down here. And let's make this four marks. And let's put a display style here because I'm gonna put some fractions. And let's put it fractions, let's go fraction. And the first fraction is gonna be one over X plus four. So numerator in one bracket, denominator in another bracket. And let's subtract another fraction. Let's put frac and let's put three X over X minus two. And don't forget to drop the points. So I'm gonna now need to put drop points for every single question, but that's fine because Overleaf will start to learn that and will suggest it for me. If I now click recompile, you can see that over here on the right hand side, I have three questions. One is with out any parts to it, it's just a straightforward question, find the equation of the tangent. Part two, or question two, has a couple of has a couple of parts to it, has a part A and part B. And then question three has again another couple of parts, but the parts are presented in a different ways, part one and part two. And of course I can compile part, I can put parts together, okay, so I could have a part within a subpart. For example, if I come over here, I can put question. Okay, uh, and let's try, well actually let's not actually say what the question is going to be. Let's create a subpart, let's go parts, oops, begin parts. Okay, uh, and let's put a part here, and I'm going to first of all create an expand question, so an exam part. And then within that I'm going to put uh, begin uh, subparts. Okay, and then if I put part here, uh, I can put the number of marks here, so let's create a three mark question, and let's just put something like um, x times by x minus two, drop points, and then another part, let's create part two, and let's just go something like, um, I don't know, three x times by x plus four, I don't always use x, or 45, uh, I don't always use x, but just for the sake of this example, I'm just creating something quickly, okay? So that will basically be part one, so if I recompile that, you can see that that's gonna be all part of part A. Okay, so part A has expand, then three X plus 45, okay? And then in my next thing, I'm just gonna create another part. So I'm gonna go part, and then I'm gonna begin and end subparts again. So begin subparts and end subparts, okay? And then for this thing, I'm gonna go part, and let's create a four mark question, and I don't know, let's just go something like three uh, X, just like that, I don't know what this is gonna be. Oops. And let's just create another part down here. Sorry, subpart, isn't it? Haha, <laughs> it probably throw back an error because I forgot to put subpart here. Because you know, so I've got the subpart environment, I should have put subpart here. Okay, so that should be subpart, and that should be subpart. So my apologies, if that didn't compile, I can see there's an error appearing up here. By the way, if an error does compare, just click on it, and it will tell you uh, what the error is, okay? So I didn't pick up on that. Nice thing about Overleaf as well, it will try to compile it even if there is an error, okay? Sometimes it can't, but usually it will. Uh, so let's create another subpart down here. And let's put part two, and let's just put, I don't know, five X uh, here, and let's drop points. So in fact, let's make this a substitution question. So I'm gonna go substitute uh, X equals two into the following. Okay, so how I basically created this, I did this very quickly, but let's talk this through. So the first things first is my question. So this is effectively gonna be, well, it's gonna be question four now, okay? Then I begin my parts. So my first part is gonna be expands, so that's my part A. And then within that expands part, I can then have further subparts. So I've got part one and two. And then I basically end that, and then I begin my second part, so my part B. And this is gonna be substitute into the following, and then I can basically then create another subpart. So let's actually have a look and see what this looks like on the right-hand side, it might make a bit more sense. So you can see I've got A and B, so let's separate this out a little bit more. Okay, oops, wrong place. Okay, so I've got part A is here, and within part A, I've got a couple of different subparts, and then within part B, I've then got another different subpart. So you can basically create parts within parts within parts um, by doing this kind of method here, okay? So hopefully that kind of makes sense.